I more want you to see what this thing can do and talk about it rather than every feature and nuance. The idea here is that we have uh, a custom record that we call the commissioner royalty rate card. And a rate card represents a definition of an obligation that you have relative to transactions system. So for example, in this case, we're defining a commission obligation. We're saying, hey, whenever the sales rep of a transaction is Krista, then we want to pay commission. And one of these rate cards consists of some header level information. Then it has qualifiers. In other words, when is this rate card applicable? And then how do we book the transaction that results? So I'm putting an edit mode so this is a little bit clearer. So here we're saying this is a commission. We're paying it to Krista. In this system, Krista happens to be an employee. You can say, is this on when we've earned the money and invoice represents something we've earned to which we're entitled to be paid. And the invoice, in this case, the lines of the invoice or the header match this criteria. So we could say, for example, Krista only receives this commission rate when she sells in this location or when certain items are being sold and so on. So you can create multiple rate cards that are all applicable to Krista with different criteria. But in that same way, we can create other criteria. And one of the important things is this is the standard criteria that comes with the bundle. But we have built this in such a way that we can add additional filters that are completely unique to the implementation. So we put this in the system and the client, let's say, has some item category or some customer attribute. We could add that as a filter here without breaking the bundle, as it were. So we can say only when the customer, let's say, is in North America, then this applies, et cetera. And then you define, is the obligation based on the revenue or on the profit? Then is it a percentage or a specific amount and so on? So in this case, we're saying on the revenue, this commission, she gets, Crystal gets 10% of the revenue. And you could also specify that this is only relevant to transactions within a certain date range and so on. In a similar way, I've defined here a royalty rate card. And I'm saying, hey, only when we sell these items, because these items happen to be somehow linked to this vendor. So when we sell these items, we owe the vendor 15% of our sales revenue. Same concept. So you define as many of these rate cards as you want. Now we're going to have, I have here a sample invoice that happens to match up to both of these rate cards, both in terms of the commissions and in terms of the royalty. So anytime you then create or change such a transaction, the system behind the scenes will create a series of obligation records that match up to those rate cards. And it will create one obligation card for every rate card that matched. Hey, when it's done, come in here. And what you see here, here are the two uh, transaction. Now, these are custom transactions that we call Prolecto Commission Royalty Transactions. So let's just pull these up for a second. They look like journal entries to a large extent, but the detail here matches the detail of the invoice. So in this case, this is a royalty. So it's being the payable is being paid to the vendor, and it's based on 15% of the revenue of this invoice. This transaction links back to the rate card that produced it, as well as the invoice that produced it. Similarly, the commission transaction is payable to Krista. And again, it links to her to that rate card and that transaction. One of the things that you can specify uh, in the configuration is when these obligations are created, are they created in pending approval or approved? So if they're created approved, then no one has to review them, right? Whereas if you create them in um, pending approval, then someone has to come review and approve them before they actually have a GL impact. Additionally, once you have these obligations, you can then pay them through your regular accounts payable system. So if we go to transactions, payables, pay single vendor, if I come into a, here into a payment and I pick ABC vendor, you will see here's that obligation to which, uh, for which I owe money. And if I give them a payment of $25 in this example, 
when this payment is saved, if I come back into this obligation record, what I will see is that I have paid 25 of it. And this is all using standard NetSuite linkages that happen when payments are made. And additionally, I see here that 25 of this particular line has been paid because all those payments are done to line. So this is the full kind of transactional loop that this thing creates. Every time you touch a transaction, it will first delete any obligations that already existed and then recreate them. So in that sense, it's completely self-healing and the obligation is always created at the same date and period as the original. So if you have the ability to post to GL for that period, then you have the ability to delete and recreate these obligation records the same way. Additionally, this system also supports the idea of a plugin script. So when the script gets to the point where, okay, I know the basis of this because it's profit and this line is $140, it can at that point call out to a custom plugin script that gets that data and can munge it and modify the basis so that if somehow the rules are beyond what can be described on here, a custom script can then step in, make some changes before the transaction, the obligation is actually created. Thank you, Pabana. Do we, do we have any yeah. questions?